Hello everybody, GGG just released all of the Ascendancy class info for the early access launch of Path of Exile 2 and being a certified melee enthusiast, I figured I would cover both of the Warrior Ascendancies, the Titan and the Warbringer. I'm just going to go in order of what these nodes are numbered. Let's give a full breakdown and try to give you my thoughts on their overall power. So starting with Stone Skin, 50% more armor from equipped body armor. It remains to be seen how useful this is going to be. We don't know the new formulas for everything, like how much does your armor reduce the physical damage taken. We do know, however, that armor does now apply to all physical damage. Before, in Path of Exile 1, it only applied to hits of physical damage. Now it applying to everything means d damage over time, like bleeds, uh, maybe corrupted blood if it still exists. Uh, those things will now be reduced by your armor as well, which is pretty interesting. But for a single pointer and it doesn't go anywhere, I don't see a lot of people taking this unless there's like some niche armor stacking build out there. Number two, Earthbreaker, 20% chance for slam skills you use yourself to cause aftershocks. And right here, an aftershock is a burst of area damage occurs at the initial impact, and the aftershock will deal the same damage as the initial impact in the same area. Now, I don't know how many aftershocks you can have have. I don't know if there's a cap. I don't know if aftershocks can also aftershock. I doubt that's the case, but let's just say you hit the ground. If you have a hundred percent chance to cause an aftershock, you're going to get just one aftershock, even though it says cause aftershocks. So you can probably get above 100% to, you know, get a chance to do multiple aftershocks. It's probably how the mechanic works. I've not played the game hands-on. Someone can tell me in the comments, if you guys have played or you've seen any, anyone else play how it actually works. Anyway, I'm going to assume that this just means 20% more damage with a slam skill. It's that simple. Uh, so it says you use yourself because your totems are also going to be able to use slam skills. But, you know, provided that they're not a major DPS component of your build, they might be, actually. I don't know. We can just assume this is 20% more damage. Not terrible at all. Number three, Ancestral Empowerment. Every second slam skill that you use yourself, again, no totems, is ancestrally boosted. What is ancestrally boosted? 20% more damage and area of effect. Um, I don't know how I feel about this because... I would much rather have this second node here, right? Because this is 20% more damage in the vast majority of cases. But this one is a 20% more damage every second time. So best case scenario, you have like a really fast attacking slam skill that you can get out of the way in like 0.1 seconds. That's not going to be the case, but let's just something that has like one third of the attack rate, the cast time of your actual damaging slam. So you use your damaging slam. It's ancestrally boosted. And then you use like your quick slam real, real fast just to get it out of the way. And then you go back to your big boy slam to get the ancestral boost again for only 20% more damage. So this is conditional 20% and this is non-conditional. So you can think of this one because it's every other as only like 10% more damage. I guess that's worst case scenario because that would assume that you're using the same slam skill. One ancestral boost, one regular, one back to ancestral. That would be 10% more damage. Whereas if, uh, again, you have a like a fast attacking slam skill, it would be probably more than 10% more damage. Maybe like 17% more damage, something like that. But in all, for all intents and purposes, I think node number two, Earthbreaker, is better than Ancestral Empowerment. I don't really see, uh, I guess you get the AoE boost from Ancestral Empowerment, which maybe there's going to be like a very significant use case for 20% more area of effect. Uh, we're not quite sure at this time, but I, I don't see that node being like super, super, super crazy. So moving on, number four, Colossal Capacity. Carry a chest which adds 20 inventory slots. You just get 20 extra inventory space. I don't think that's a good node. I think this is total bait. Now the node behind it, which is why this node probably exists in the first place. The node behind it, Hulking Form, has some very, very, very interesting uh, use cases. We don't know exactly what the passive tree looks like. This is the uh, close example, closest example we have so far. I'll leave a link in the description to this. Um, and let's just say I've, I've also seen some uh, other versions of the passive tree that are not uh, accurate compared to this. So I don't know which one to believe. However... There are some nodes that are pretty good, like right here. 20% increased damage against enemies with fully broken armor. If you have 50% increased effect, that goes up to 30% for a single point. And you probably would come in here to get this one, right? Pile on. So you essentially, your small node is half of your notable node at that point when you're taking the 50% increased effect. You also have like uh, stuff like plus one max resistance. I don't know if it would round up. I highly doubt that it would. In Path of Exile 1, most things round down. So if you have 1% and then you increase it by 50% of its value, it'd go to 1.5, but it would round back down to one. Um, I'm assuming that's how it's going to work here in Path of Exile 2. If it doesn't, it's actually a massive, massive increase. Uh, to take that 50% more effect, right? Or essentially if more effect, um, maybe we get, you know, other sources of increased effect of small notable skills somewhere or small passive skills somewhere. I'm not quite sure. In the attribute nodes here, I don't know if these would count as small passive skills. Um, in Path of Exile 1, they definitely do count, but now they're specifically called 
uh, like the attribute highway instead of like an actual passive node. But that's just one of those things that we have to get our hands on in Path of Exile 2 to truly see if that happens. But having 50% you know, increased value of all the attribute nodes could be pretty interesting as well. So it remains to be seen in total how good hulking form uh, is going to be. I could see it being very, very, very good. Uh, but also not the best, especially considering you have to go through number four, which essentially, you know, provides nothing. Come on, guys. Like, I know inventory space is cool and all, but come on, it's just quality of life. It doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't increase the power of your character, uh, at least as far as we know. Like, maybe we're going to add in some charm slots or something. But as of right now, uh, my conclusion would be that hulking form is something that the community will figure out later on once we have unique items rolling in and jewels and all this other stuff to build our character. Uh, I don't think early on and early, uh, I don't think at the start of early access, it'll be very strong. All right, moving on to node number six, crushing impacts. Your hits are crushing blows. A crushing blow simply causes a heavy stun on anything that is primed for a stun. And you primed enemies for a stun by building up a bar, and at 40% of that bar, you can stun a normal enemy, 60% for a magic, 70% for a rare, and 80% for a unique. So you're not talking about like health remaining of the enemy or health that you've dealt damage. And there's a separate meter under each enemy called a stun meter, and then as you're building that up through various means, when you hit them with a crushing blow, and they are ready for a heavy stun, bam, they're going to be heavy stunned. And a heavy stunned enemy basically is totally immobilized, they cannot act, they cannot move, they cannot attack, you can't do anything. Also, it says here for a heavy stun, if you deal physical damage and or should say and or melee damage, each of them cause 50% more heavy stun buildup and they are multiplicative within one another. So basically, if you're just playing a unga bunga big bonk build, physical damage, melee build, that's the vast majority of what those are going to be. You're going to be doing, I think it's 125% more stun buildup, if uh, my math is correct there. Because if you hit something normally for 100 stun buildup, you do 50% more, it's 150, but then it's multiplicative with the other 50%. So you take 150 times 50%, which is 75. 225, so it's 1.25. Yeah, so you're doing 125% more heavy stun buildup provided you're dealing both physical and melee damage simultaneously. So by itself, heavy stun is actually already pretty good, right? The enemy can't do anything. We don't know the duration. That's the only thing we're missing uh, information-wise here. If it's only like two seconds long, then it's <laughs> not going to be amazing whatsoever. But let's just assume most heavy stuns are going to last like four seconds, five seconds. You probably get duration on the passive tree somewhere. And then on top of that, the next node, number seven, surprising strength, 40% more damage against heavy stunned enemies. Now, I see these being uh, pretty much taken on every single Titan build here. I don't really see why you wouldn't do that, because if you're going to play this guy, you're almost assuredly going to do it with a big, heavy, bonk, slammer, jammer skill of some kind, aka you're going to be building up a lot of stun meter, and then crushing blows makes it e way easier to stun the enemies. And on top of that, you get 40% more damage when they are heavy stunned. Numerically, these have the potential to be pretty dang strong, especially if there are other factors about heavy stun that we don't know about, like other nodes on the passive tree, maybe a unique item gives you more damage or something like that. So the overall build potential of nodes six and seven, I think are very high. It'll be kind of annoying to play around it, given that you're gonna have to constantly like cycle one skill to just like build up the heavy stun meter, boom, 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 be hitting them for not a lot of damage. Then they're primed for heavy stun. You heavy stun and then you whack them with like hammer of the gods or whatever your biggest damage ability is and then you rinse and repeat so that could get that play style could get a little bit annoying and then number eight mysterious lineage uh 15 more maximum life who doesn't like more life uh me actually for one node i don't and it doesn't go anywhere i don't really see a lot of people taking this uh if you did not know the passive tree in path of exile 2 as far as we know has zero life nodes on it whatsoever so you're getting all your life from other sources mainly on your gear there's probably going to be like obviously jewels uh we'll give you some as well maybe you get like percent maximum life uh, quest reward options something like that i don't know but on the passive tree there is no increased maximum life and 15 percent more is you know 15 percent more it's like pretty good like okay cool but but again just for a single point that doesn't lead anywhere i don't think it's that powerful to conclude on the titan here i think most builds are going to go two three six seven but i could see something like a you know a two three four five if you want to do some shenanigans with like extra aftershock chance on the skill tree or like extra slam area of effect you get some like crazy values getting the 50 percent increased effect of passive skills but yeah i think two three six seven is going to be like the norm for at least the start of early access. All right, then moving on to the Warbringer. I'm not gonna lie, when this thing was revealed, I only looked at these two nodes right here, Encased in Jade and Ancestral Spirits, and I was like, oh, this is like a summoner totem guy. I don't care about this guy. Uh, then we got the rest of the information, and <laughs> he's looking pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie. So the Warbringer Ascendancy, number one, Anvil's Weight, break armor equal to 10% of the hit damage dealt. I think I'll put up a picture here of a skill called Armor Breaker. I think it's like level 11, maybe level 14, and it breaks like 1482 armor on hit. Let me just let me just open that real quick. Hold on. So here we are, Armor Breaker skill. It's level 12. I think uh, level 20 is still the maximum of skill gems, and it says hits break 1562 armor. 
So if we're dealing an additional 10% of our damage breaking the armor, we can say, I've seen the DPS meter. There is a DPS meter in the game now, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, for most of the in-game footage that they showed, it was around like 100-something K DPS. Let's just say you have 100 K DPS. And on a warrior, you're probably going to be hitting slower, but harder. So the singular hits that you're dealing are much higher. So let's just say that you're dealing 100k DPS, and let's say you hit three times per second. Those numbers might be a bit off, especially the attack speed. Maybe it's closer to two. Who knows? Let's just say three for the intensive purposes here. So that means you're dealing roughly 30k damage per hit, and then you're doing 10% of that breaking their armor. So you're doing about 3,000 armor break. And on a level 11 and on a level 12 skill gem, you're doing about half of that. So it's safe to say, given how skill gems scale in Path of Exile, they're multiplicative usually. This probably increases by an extra like, you know, 10% ish per level, something like that. This is safe to say you're probably getting like a free level 20 armor breaker every single hit in terms of armor break. And as far as we know, armor break is literally just, you know, taking the enemy's armor and reducing it by the amount that you're breaking it uh, up to the normal cap of zero. But number two, imploding impacts, you can break enemy armor to below zero. Finally, finally. Melee physical damage builds have a way to penetrate enemy resistances. So the single factor in why penetrating monster elemental resistances and chaos resistances and all that stuff in Path of Exile 1 is so powerful is because it's just straight up a multiplier to your damage. If an enemy is sitting at 0% resistance and then you lower it by 20%, they're taking 20% more damage, right? And just keeps going and going and going. You can penetrate a monster's resistances as far as you want, right? We didn't have anything like that for physical damage. Now, in Path of Exile 2, here we go. Imploding Impacts. This is probably the single reason why I'm so interested in playing the Warbringer instead of the Titan. I thought it was a no-brainer. I thought it was like, oh yeah, Titan, big, scary, slam, rah, angry guy. I'm definitely going to play him. But dude, after seeing Imploding Impacts, the potential here is extremely, extremely high. On top of that, if you're using a skill, uh, if you're going to be breaking armor, you're probably using Armor Breaker to do it, right? Because why not? Why would you not get the extra, you know, double the effectiveness of your armor break, essentially, from this line alone? And this thing is not actually up to date. The most recent example we've seen of this skill gym has a, another line on it which has 40 percent more attack speed if you are dual wielding and my plan for my first character is to run giant's blood which says you can wield two-handed weapons in one hand you're dual wielding <laughs> so you get 40 percent more attack speed and you're breaking a ton more armor and the break can just keep going past zero these nodes seem absurdly powerful i'm very very excited all right, number three, Jade Heritage grants a skill in case of Jade. You gain a stack of Jade every single second. Basically, it's just a big, scary, like, oh, crap button. You see a big, scary attack coming in, and it's, you know, your dodge is on cooldown currently or something. You press this button, and then all of a sudden, you don't take any damage from... It says hits specifically, so if you're ignited or bleeding or something, you're still going to take damage from that, so be careful. But for all intents and purposes, it's like Vol Arctic Armor. You know, you just do it when you're about to get hit by something big. I really don't see the benefits of this skill, especially because it's uh, a single point. doesn't lead anywhere. I don't see anyone really taking this unless there's like some niche case of like one specific boss out there that has like the scariest attack in the game that no one can deal with. So you just like take this node for that boss specifically. That that would be like the best case scenario. I don't really see this being useful. Number four, answered call. Just you trigger a spirit whenever you summon a totem. We don't really have any info past that. I'm assuming the spirit is going to use the links of the totem as well because it says right here it's a minion and then it dies when that uh, totem dies as well. So I think it's just going to summon like a clone of your totem that is mobile. It can run around and do stuff instead of just sitting in the same spot. Who knows uh, how useful that's going to be overall. And then the next note after that is 20% of the damage from hits is taken from your nearest totem's life before yours. So these just seem like a nice little like defensive pairing. I don't think they'll be really used for off offense maybe someone's gonna find like some stupid minion build at some point who knows but 20 percent of damage taken from hits is uh pretty dang high assuming you can have some recovery on your totems maybe you can give them like a life leech gem or something keep them alive longer if that's a, a use case so 20 percent of the damage you take is not too bad whatsoever note number six friendly's training gain 40 percent base chance to block from your shield instead of the value so just it's going to ignore whatever the block chance is and it says 40 percent whatever shield you're wearing boom done but node number seven turtle charm and the reason why i am also very strongly considering using the warbringer 35 percent less block chance pretty poopy but can block damage from all hits while shield is not raised now the way this is worded it says can block damage from all hits it doesn't say from all blockable hits because some hits are not blockable as we've seen in the gameplay trailers monsters will do like some big scary like red telegraphed attack that means it cannot be blocked whatsoever you got to get out of there right you have to dodge this says can block damage from all hits while shield is not raised now path of exile is notorious for stating things literally so it doesn't say from all blockable hits from all like uh relevant hits it does not specify it says damage from all hits 
if you think about it, if this node didn't block those big red scary AOE things, then this would be totally useless, right? What would it block? It would block like ads just spitting on you or something, right? Like think about it. If the node didn't work like that, it would be total garbage. It, it would literally be useless because why would you take it? It would block like a white skeleton throwing a fireball at you. It would block like a goat man jumping on top of you or something. Let's, let's be fair, goat man could be pretty scary. But my point is, is that it says can block damage from all hits while shield is not raised. If it doesn't work the way it's worded, if you still can't block those big like AOE slam, like it's so bad, it's garbage, do not take it. And the fact that this line right here, 35% less block chance was not in the most recent leak that happened. It just said this line can block damage from all hits. Now they added this in, means that this node almost assuredly works the way I described first, where you block in absolutely everything you know, just with 35% less block chance. Very, very, very powerful node. And last but not least, last two nodes are Warcry specific. So number eight, Warcaller's Bellow. You explode corpses in your presence when you Warcry and you deal 25% of their life as physical damage. Now it depends on how many increases to physical damage we can get on the passive tree and other global sources like on your rings and amulet and whatever. But this has the potential to be pretty dang powerful, especially because, uh, you can summon corpses. Don't forget about that. So this has the potential to be pretty good by itself, but then the next node after that, number nine, Great Wolf's Howl, ignore Warcry cooldowns. We've seen some of the Warcries, like Seismic Cry, Infernal Cry, have very good numerical values, and you just being able to ignore it means that whenever you want it, it's there, right? Whatever big boy slam you want to do, even for like a small tickle attack, if there's like a specific instance you need this Warcry up, bam, you can just pop it whenever you want. But all in all, I think the Warbringer has way more potential than the Titan in its current state. Titan just comparatively looks kind of boring. You have a much more variety here much more potential to build things and take an element from here and there and put it together and because of that i can't really speak to what i think most people are going to do but for me i think i'm going to go one two six seven if i do choose the warbringer i'm still going to go giant's blood but i'm not going to dual wield i'm going to use a shield instead and just block everything now there is a chance i go one two eight nine but regardless of the choice i'm definitely going to go one and two the armor breaker nodes because i just feel like that's going to be a more fun play style to do to just constantly whittle something down to like negative armor and then slap a massive hammer of the gods on it with a massive bleed on top of it and yes, bleed damage is affected by armor now. So negative armor means you're multiplying your bleed damage even further. Hammer the God seems busted already. Then you're putting a bleed on top of it and then you're reducing the armor into the negatives on top of that. It's just going to be disgusting. But if I do go nodes six and seven, the shield nodes, that means I'm not going to get the 40% more attack speed from dual wielding for the armor breaker skill. I might not need it because I might just be able to like hit them with a massive slam and break like a butt ton of armor in one swing. Who knows? But yeah, long story short, I think I'm going with Warbringer. I still might go with Titan. We'll have to see what the actual passive tree nodes look like. But I do know that I'm excited nonetheless to play some Path of Exile too. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment below what you guys are going to play, what you think are the powerful nodes, what you think are pretty weak. Otherwise, you can check out my stream at Twitch tv slash woolly gaming while be playing a butt ton of path of exile 2 and consider subscribing here if you want to see more content thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video